let's take a look at how we can use Google Sheets to simulate retirement withdrawals. Now we could just assume you earn the same return every year and that the inflation rate is the same every year, but that's not very realistic. Okay, a more realistic model simulates this by, by setting up the model, making certain things random, and then replicating it many times. And it's sometimes referred to as a Monte Carlo simulation. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that you begin, or a retiree begins with a million dollars in their retirement account. And they're going to begin their withdrawal by taking 4% out of their retirement. Uh, retirement fund. Okay, This 4% comes, it's become a rule of thumb and this financial planner many years ago actually looked at return data, um, historical return data and tried to figure out well gee if people took out you know a certain percentage how long would it last? You, you certainly don't want your retirement money to run out. And he found that 4% was pretty good. Okay, it, it uh, was a reasonable amount of money to take out, and if you took out, you know, more than that, the chances of running out of money in 25 years were relatively high. But if you took out 4%, in most cases, you had a 90-some percent chance of it lasting 30 or more years. So that was pretty good. Um, we're going to assume here that rather than just have a flat standard or flat average return of 6%, that there's a standard deviation that fluctuates. While you might average 6% return over your retirement, you may get 3% one year, you might get 9% another year, you might get exactly 6% one year, you might actually see your portfolio go down a year and then go up a lot the next year, etc, etc. So we're gonna we're gonna randomly generate different returns for each period. And we're going to assume that you're going to be retired for 30 years. We're going to do the same thing with the inflation rate. Again, the inflation rate m might run at 2.5%, but it's not going to be 2.5% every year. It might be 3.5% one year, it might be half a percent one year, etc. So we're going to randomly simulate that. So how do we do that? We can use this function in Excel called N-O-R-M-I-N-V and it'll generate a variable that has the mean you put in and the standard deviation and it's going to vary depending on this probability x you put in. Now you don't want to put in just a number x because then you're going to get the same number each time. So there's a function that generates a random variable, random x between 0 and 1. So if you just type in rand and then you just open and close the parentheses you, um, it'll just generate different numbers. So you'll see that when I do this, you'll have different returns each period. So we're going to put in the mean. The mean amount here is 6%, and I'm going to lock the cell with a dollar sign. And then the standard deviation is 8%. And again, I want to lock that cell. And I close up the parentheses and I get 9.37%, so well above the 6% average. And actually, when I type things in, you'll see this number change. I'm going to then copy this down for the 30 periods we have. And you can see we get different returns, right? Uh, see, now in the first year, because it changes every time you type something in, uh, it's actually negative 1.17%. Okay, but over here it's 19.71%. So some years you get really great return. Some years you get kind of an average return, you know, 5.87, pretty close to 6. And sometimes you get uh, a negative return. Okay, much more realistic. We're going to do the same thing with the inflation rate. So again, we'll use that same function. And the mean inflation rate is two and a half percent and again I'll lock that cell and the standard deviation is one and a half percent Oops. We'll type that in again uh, two and a half percent and lock
unlock that cell and then one and a half percent and lock this cell and you can see we get this um, inflation rate which is less than the two and a half percent but again when I copy this down you'll see sometimes it's above the two and a half percent sometimes it's below it's gonna vary now how are we gonna do this we're gonna begin with a beginning balance of a million so you start with the million and you're gonna have certain earnings your earnings we're going to assume are going to be this times one plus the return that you earn okay so we have equals this times one plus the return of that period okay and again every time I type something in you see this number changes right so your amount went up we're gonna assume you begin your withdrawal at um, four percent of your original mil million dollars so I'm going to put in your withdrawal rate times this Okay, so you're going to begin taking out 40,000. So what's your ending balance going to be? Your ending balance is going to be equal to, and actually I did this incorrectly, your earnings would just be this, your total value would be that. So let me just, let me just fix that, it should not be one plus, it should just be your earnings are just the interest rate. There we go. So in this case you lost money. What's your ending balance? Your ending balance is going to be equal to your beginning balance plus your earnings minus your withdrawal. Okay, so each time I did it, last time it was negative, this time it was positive, so your ending balance is, is larger. What's your beginning balance the next period? It's going to be equal to this. So what we're going to do, we're going to assume, all right, in this case, we'll just generate the earnings. The earnings would be the same formula, right? Negative return, you lost you lost 119,000 here because the return was down by about 11%. We're going to assume your withdrawal is going to be equal to the 40,000 and you're just going to increase it by the inflation rate. So in the first year we didn't adjust for inflation. Um, but here we're going to adjust for inflation. So the amount you're going to withdraw is going to be equal to this amount times one plus the inflation rate. So, you know, you want to inc keep your standard of living the same. So you bump up the amount you take out. And your ending balance should be the same there. All right. So let's see if we can uh, just copy these these items down. Now some of these, because I have things in the middle, you're going to, uh, you may see some things that where there's no answer there, right? And let me see here. Let me see if I can. The amount you withdraw. And let's see if this works out here. Go one more year. And the ending balance. All right. So there we've done this. And in this replication, you actually have four million dollars left over when you're done okay after 30 years okay you probably could have taken out a little more money well you happen to have some really good returns and the returns were good in the early going which again it's to trouble is when you have bad returns in the early years and then um, you you just don't have enough money in your account okay you do have some bad returns in here some negative returns minus seven percent but these came up later on. You had a lot of really good returns early. Now, this is just one scenario. What we'd like to do is replicate this a bunch of times. So 
we use what's called a Monte Carlo simulation. So I'm going to put that number in there. So now you can see you're, you're, you actually have a negative number in this replication. So how are we going to do that? All right, I've done this in Excel. And in Excel, you use the what if table, uh, what if, what if um, analysis tool and you create a data table. Here in Google Sheets, you have to do it a little bit differently. You have to use something called Solver. Now, if you don't have Solver installed, you can get Solver by simply going to uh, get add-ons and then just solving, uh, just uh, searching for it, and then just installing that. All right, I already have it installed here, so it doesn't matter. So I'm going to go to Extensions, and I'm going to go Solver, and I'm going to say Start. And it's going to give me some information here. Actually, I don't want to use Solver. I want to use Risk Solver. Risk Solver. Solver optimizes something. Risk Solver, and you can search it out the same way. Risk Solver lets you do a Monte Carlo simulation. So let me see if I can, I can get this right here. So here it asks you to add a distribution. You don't want to do that because if you add a distribution you're going to get something like the standard normal distribution and you're going to get zeros and ones and that's not really what you know a mean of zero and a standard deviation. Well, we want to actually see the amount that we think you'll have, the average. So let's go to outputs and I'm going to remove that old output. I'm going to add a new one and this is the one I want to add. I want to add this should be, let me try that again, Out, add output, okay, I'm in C10, and you can, you can also do some um, adjusting of things here, okay, how many replications, etc. So you can hit this uh, settings wheel. So we should be good to go, let's just hit this green arrow and what it's doing is it's going to do this a thousand times and it's going to create some distribution. If you click that on you get some distribution here. And let's uh, let me move to an empty part of the sheet here and we can copy it into our spreadsheet. It has some descriptive statistics. Copy to sheet and here it is and let me just uh, let me highlight these and let me format these make it a little easier to see We can get rid of the pennies, right? And we can look at the mode and the minimum and the maximum, same thing. And you can see that if you follow this strategy based on the assumptions we have, it looks like you have a pretty good chance of having about a million and a half when you uh, when those 30 years are up. Okay, so even if you live a little bit longer, you'll probably be okay. All right, but there are time periods when you wind up with negative amounts of money, right? You ru actually run out of money. Now, the difference between this and doing it in Excel, Excel, when you create the data table, you actually see all the um, different values, and you can actually use um, one of the functions to figure out the probability of, you know, running out of money or the probability of run having less than two hundred thousand dollars when you die. Here it just gives you the summary statistics. But it gives you a reasonable idea and it's much more realistic to do a simulation by changing the returns etc. Because you're not always going to get you know six percent. It's not always going to be a two and a half percent inflation rate. And this is how you know a lot of these um, robo investor models or actually a lot of investment professionals do it. They do a simulation to try and figure out what's the optimal amount of money to take out. So um, it's a little bit different doing this in, in Google Sheets than it is in Excel. And it took me a while to figure this out, so I wanted to share this with you.